Hi everyone, it's Shamila Ramjawan coming to you from the Red Corner Show in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I have a very special guest today, Deborah J. Kelly, who is in the UK. Hello, Deborah. Hello. Hello, it's so lovely to see you. Absolutely. We last saw each other in 2018. Can you believe that? Was it really 2018? No. Time goes too quickly, doesn't it? I know. It feels like just the other day when we were having so much fun in fairs in Morocco. We were, and the weather was beautiful. There was no lockdown. I was interviewing you. You were dressed in your most beautiful, beautiful outfit. And uh, I've never forgotten that. That was, I haven't seen you since. Oh, thank you so much. Oh you know, I remember the day you interviewed me as well for national TV. And that was just, I think it was one of my very first interviews. I was so nervous, but oh, you made oh, me oh. feel so comfortable because, you know, just sitting alongside you and you just interviewing me was just amazing. And I share that video all the time. Um, oh. And I was so impressed to actually see that you have me in your bio as well. Thank you. Of course I do. You're an impressive lady. And, you know, it's about promoting each other and it's about it's about uh, sisterhood, isn't it? I love that sisterhood. You know, we've got to thank uh, Dr. Caroline Makaka for actually joining us all together and, and forming this great sisterhood. Yeah, she did. And I've been trying to upload some information about it because I just... I didn't realize it was such a long time ago, but to bring so many ambassadors together um, and to give me the opportunity to interview them as well. And, you know, to meet so many interesting, inspiring and exciting women, it was incredible. And I'm so grateful for meeting you as well, Debra. So uh, we're going to get right into the chat, but I just need to introduce you to the audience because, you know, I went onto your website. My goodness. Deborah, what didn't you do? Where haven't you been? <laughs> it's just incredible. You know, I encourage everybody to just go onto your website. Just search for you and just read about you because you're such an inspiration. Oh, so, thank you. It's a pleasure. Deborah J. Kelly is an award-winning fashion presenter, red carpet interview queen, an author, reality TV actress, ambassador, mature model, CEO of AATT, Celebrity Red Carpet Skincare, Entrepreneur, and so much more. <laughs> Thank you. Deborah, where do I start? I actually don't know where to start. Maybe tell the audience a little bit about who is Deborah. Oh, my goodness. Deborah is multifaceted. Um, and has so many different, you know, different roles. And, but it's all really, um, number one, with the passion for humankind and for uniting um, cultural diversity. That's, that's in the forefront of everything that I do. Um, and the second thing, I guess, is really, I've always been in media since I was 17 years old. It's, I can't, you know, it's a passion. It's something that I believe that I was born to do. It's something that I think was a gift. Um, and, you know, and I've always done that. But at the same time, in the background of that, I've always been caring for people, looking after them, uh, mentoring them, um, helping them through wherever. Well, it started as a therapy school, actually, and then kind of progressed on to a beauty school. But again, most of our students have um, English as their second language. So it's always been very important to me um, to integrate you know, all of us actually in unity. And this is sort of a, I think a passion that's driven me and will continue to drive me um, until I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be unstoppable. Thank you. I think, you know, we have to look at what you know what is going on in our lives and I I I didn't have children um when I got married he already had uh, them and he didn't want any more um so I think you know we at a deep level I think we create um children like my my school my beauty school I mentor so many young women um and I almost see myself as a kind of mother figure to them you know I give them advice and 
you know, when they get crazy about so many of the things now in life that, you know, they're, they're being compelled to do, like having Botox at a really young age, um, you know, thinking about cosmetic surgery, because I think a part of their body isn't, isn't right. And I think there's so much pressure now for young women growing up. Um, and I always like to, I like to be an inspiration to them. And I like to say, look, you know, I'm in my 50s. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I'm really embracing the age that I'm at. I don't want to be a different age. Um, I, I would like my I would like my joints to be a different age uh, when I get <laughs> <don't you> <laughs> But yeah. Um, Wonderful. And you know, I always say uh, when I think of Deborah, I think of showbiz because that's basically you in a nutshell. Because I mean, you've been on the red carpet. I don't know how many times um, you've interviewed the most famous people. Um, so I call you Deborah in showbiz. <laughs> Thank how, you. How did that journey actually start? Because obviously you had a passion for it and it's something that grew on you. How did it start? I think I, I always wanted to be a media and um, I actually went in to start for a newspaper because we're going back some considerable years now and I went there sort of part time at 16 and I made tea. Um, I was a tea maker. That was what I was employed to do. And I was absolutely desperate um, to get into, uh, you know, being actually in media. And within six months, because I was I really you know, I go at something 100% when I've got a passion. And within six months, I think I was running about 80% of the newspaper. Um, I was unstoppable because it was really, it was just such a passion. It was, and then by the end, of, by the age of 30, um, I was um, the group director uh, for 56 national magazines. Um, and then I went on and I presented um, all different, you know, promotional events over the entire of the Sky Network. I was trying to think how many channels I actually had at the time. I'm sure it was like 200 or 250. Um, and I did. I, I really got, you know, ahead of my head of my game. Um, I won lots of holidays, lots of awards uh, for being the top person, you know, in media. Um, but setting all of that aside, um, because it's really important to express who I am. Um, my drive always um, was to was to be able to have that compassion um, for another yeah. human being. And I think this is my gift that I have interviewed celebrities and I've interviewed, you know, um, ladies of every charity, every disability. And I think the most important thing to say is that you know, it's that ability to actually look at them and to say, who is this person? What have they been through? And to understand when you're interviewing somebody, because it's not about you, it's about them. So your judgments are really, you know, because you haven't stood in their shoes. So I think this is a really important part for me. And I, I was very very seriously ill um which a lot of people don't know but for for nearly 10 years i was in intensive care twice i i nearly died actually um it, it was a serious serious illness and the doctors could never diagnose it it looked like i'd been burnt in a fire um and it really put me back with my dreams and my compassions but what i take out of it in a positive way is that it made me a much more compassionate person that could really relate to people that were suffering that is oh, so that was 10 years of your life and um i can only imagine what you went through in those 10 years but let's look on the bright side um who was the most uh or, or should i uh, let's just reword this your favorite person that you interviewed on the red carpet who was that? Oh, I, I couldn't even, I mean, there's, you know, there's celebrities like Amrit Channa, um, Chelsea Singh, um, some of the big brother and, uh, you know, the, the um, I'm trying to remember the name of them now, is it Love Island? Something like that. Anyway, but they're really funny. Um, and 
and putting on that hat of they've all got such you know such sort of egos and 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 her being a part of that was great but then on the other side of things you know interviewing survivors survivors of, of serious illnesses people with mental illness um and i'm an ambassador for you know quite a few charities that promote well-being within these issues and so i think really my journey is such that i i just i absolutely love people i love the diversity i love their life that they bring to the table and they all everybody has different lives so it's it's never boring it's always thrilling to find out um, about every individual Yes, and uh, you know, it actually makes me think about the time when we were in Morocco and we visited the retirement home and how we actually mingled with everybody, we danced with them, and we just had so much of fun. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's really important, and this is something I was thinking about actually before this interview because a lot of people, you know, I've got my hair all dolled up and you know, I'm wearing my dress. I dressed up for you, my lovely. Um, oh, you know, you know, that kind of stunning, <laughs> absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But the reality is that we all have issues. We all struggle, um, you know, and there's always a story behind the face that you see. And this is very much what Morocco was about as well. You know, it's about talking to the ambassadors and, of course, you know, we were all dressed up culturally um, and we all, you know, felt fantastic. But the reality is that that is the face. You know, that is something that we show um, to the public. But behind that are so many, you know, lessons in life um, and trials and tribulations. And that's that's what I'm interested in. When I speak to somebody, I really want to get to the core of that person it's not a superficial interview so I often I don't plan my interviews I just interview someone exactly at that moment depending on who's facing me and the interview will always be different depending on who I think that person is you know from the core yes so yes. You, you have the gift to immediately suss a person out yeah I think my I think my illness, uh, and I've always been quite a sensitive person, and you know I can I can sense a lot of things. You know, often negativity that's going on, and and so yeah. I mean, I just think that sensitivity is compassion. Uh, it's compassion for a human being. It's not judging them. It's not being jealous of them it's not wanting their life it's actually about trying to explore who that person is absolutely i so agree with you. and you know with them sharing their stories and having somebody to talk to that's giving them support and confidence as well um yes. so thank you for that what does it mean for you to be an ambassador for all these charities because you linked to so many charities i know i am it's relentless um, and I actually wish that I could do more, I'll be honest with you, but I just, you know, there's just one of me. Um, I think this is the essence of where I am and what I do. And I don't really do anything unless I'm taking somebody else with me or unless I'm celebrating it with someone else. Um, and I guess really so many different charities I'm thinking of and, you know, diverse charities as well that I've been involved in and they've really embraced me um, and they've wanted me to be part of their lives and I'm really you know I'm, I'm so proud um, of being able to do that and I think without getting it into it in a really deep way I think that stemmed from childhood um, and it was a passion uh, that never really changed in me you know I always went by some of my personal experiences that I went through and, and looked at them and I looked at me as a person and, and that was really something that sort of inspired me to want to be involved in charities. I think, again, it all comes down to compassion. It comes down to doing what you can while you can in this life. And I'm not a soul-driven person. 
if I'm going to do something, I want to take people with me and I want to celebrate it with them. That is wonderful. Yeah. So you're not selfish. And, you know, like you said, it's compassion, it's empathy, and it's just feeling for people. I think it, it comes from within. It does. You're so right there. It really is. And yeah, I mean, it's fortunately, I've been embraced um, by so many people in the industry. But at the same time, I've still had, you know, a few um, backlashes or a few things happening. Um, and I guess that's human nature. You know, you can't please everybody all of the time, but it wouldn't stop my drive um, to be compassionate to every single person that I meet because it's how I was made and it's who I am. For sure. For sure. I can relate to that as well. Take me through your journey of being a reality TV star. My journey, oh my goodness. Well, I mean, going back to when I was a youngster, <laughs> um, I was young. always. You're still oh, young. You're oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I was. I was always uh, in the background. I did do. I was voicing quite a lot of commercials. Um, I was appearing in quite a lot of different shows and things like that. But I guess my goals um, were a little bit different then. Um, and then as I got. I suppose I started healing really. And I would say from about sort of 44, 45 years onwards, um, people started showing an interest in me. And I, I think I have a gift of being able to speak naturally from the heart. You know, I'm not a scripted person. Mm -hmm. um, I find it very difficult in interviews to actually do scripts because I don't think they bring out the personality of people. I don't think they allow us to laugh and to have joy and to really have that heartfelt, you know, connection. Um, so for me, reality TV was really about, they were approaching me. I've done so much, but I, because a lot of it spans over, I'm trying to think now, about 35 years, um, I don't have a lot of it. Um, I, I don't have copies of things. And because it's been so much as well, um, sometimes I sit down, I think, my goodness, what was that? That was 20 years ago. Um, so, but it's always been reality for me. So it's been about being me. Um, and if somebody wants to change that and give me a script, I'm not very good at that. I freeze up. Yes, you know, yes, I, I see you in terms of just keeping records of what you've done and where you were at, because I'm going through the same thing, you know, and I think back and think, why didn't I keep that? Or, you know, just oh. a newspaper article or, or something, a video, um, yes. you know, and it's so important for us to have those records. And I think, you know, any anybody that's listening now, and if you are growing into um, this uh, enormous character and or you have this personality out there in media or you're an entrepreneur just you know save your journey because it's so important to have those records and look back and one day you know when you're sitting on that rocking chair you can say to your grandkids this is what I've done you know this is where I am and I agree I always say to people you know with my chats on the red corner show this is my retirement fund it's going to be something that I'm going to sit back and say I interviewed Deborah at that time and this is what we chatted about and I'm going to watch all of this oh you know the thing is we didn't have internet it sounds awful doesn't it but we didn't you know in in my like I remember the first internet connection that was horrendous and you had to wait like half an hour and it would make this noise which would go like ee, <laughs> when it was connecting and you know it was we didn't have that so we didn't um <laughs> I've got newspapers from 1980 um, that I was actually featured in and they're going like green now, you know, when they get really old and they start kind of, and, but we didn't have anything that we have these days. You know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have, we didn't have websites like we do now. Um, so a lot of my stuff is so old <laughs> that it's literally, you know, in old newspaper format. That's okay. You know, we just need to start keeping all our, our stuff now, you know, archive it and we know that we have it um, because there's so many important things that happen in our lives and we need yes. to treasure those memories. Yes, we do. 
<laughs> and you know what's so sad is I can't find my modeling portfolio and that's something that I would really love yeah. to have but somewhere along the line with all the moves and stuff uh, that got mislaid but um, here I am you know in flesh and always beautiful and you. you know this is the thing about embracing different um, different ages as well you know when we go through these transitions from our 20s and then to our 30s and our 40s and for me at my 50s um, and each you know each kind of decade um, brings experience and it brings like those life memories um, and I think it's I think it's really important to embrace you know where you are for sure I so agree with you you know I had somebody um, DM me today on Instagram and he asked me if I'm for real and I said to you, why do I look plastic? Because I've never had Botox. I've never had anything, any enhancements done as yet. I'm not ruling it out completely. If I need to have it at some point, I will do it because I'm not against it. But I just feel at this point in time, I don't need it. And I couldn't understand the, you know, why he said that. Okay, we do know that when we, you know, I would say 99.5% of the people that put out pictures on social media, it's photoshopped it's got filters we cut out the wrinkles we you know the dark circles we use makeup um so so yes so i said to him do you do i look plastic and um so he just said no i'm in awe and i thought oh okay that's a nice compliment actually yeah it's a lovely compliment i think you know again we didn't come from the time where you had to go for your botox every three months you know you had to have your fillers again you know it sounds awful I keep referring back to my day but we didn't have anything we didn't have both talks we didn't have fillers um and I wasn't brought up that way so actually you know there are so many things that my students are are doing for beauty now for Instagram you know and this kind of stuff and and they think that they have to have this to be beautiful but actually they're beautiful anyway um, I think all of us can look back, you know, I look at myself and I think, my God, you know, it'd be really nice if I could have a little nip and tuck and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it probably would be. Um, a, I'm, I'm not able to do it because of the recovery period being so long. B, it's really expensive. And C, I'm scared. Um, but I think, you know, there's always now, especially with these young Insta uh, Instagram girls, there's so much pressure on them to have to have all these enhancements you know the false boobs and all of this kind and I'm always talking about it because I don't have anything false um I don't know I, I would feel weird with something false in my body but that's just my personal opinion I understand why they do that do it and I have to be honest and say I do because there's so much pressure now in society to have to look the way they want to be Yes, I, I agree with you. I, I just feel if you don't need it, uh, why do it? You know, um, uh, women are beautiful. Everyone's beautiful in their own they way. Are. They um, are. There's, there's no need to do that. You know, I mean, I, I've got these high cheekbones. I mean, people are paying to get this now. And I was bullied in school for having these high cheekbones because, I, you know, people used to laugh at me. And now everyone's paying to have it. Well, I commented on it. It was the first thing I said when I saw you. You know, you've got high cheekbones and and this this is the most incredible thing. Um, and, and like you said, so many girls now um, are looking at having these whatever they are, these implants, you know, to 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 try and enhance their cheeks. Now, I'm really scared about it, I, especially the face. You know, uh, if I have to have anything done, it would be on the rest of my body, <laughs> but not my face, because this is going to face the world. <laughs> You can't hide it. <laughs> you can't hide it. Unless no. you're wearing a mask nowadays, you know, you can hide half of it, but not the whole face. It was so funny. Somebody said to me, I can't remember who it was now, but somebody said to me, you know, the new, the new look now is the eyebrow. Make sure your eyebrows are uh, fantastic and your eyelashes, because it's the only part that people see of you anymore because you're wearing your mask like this. <laughs> You know, the trouble with that is you don't know when someone's smiling or you, you can't see this, judge the facial expressions if you're not good uh, with the eyes, you know, if you can't read someone's eyes. And that's the problem I have because I'm a very smiley person. If I've got to go out, even if I go to a supermarket and I'm with the tailor, I don't know the expression behind that mask. 
Yes, I know. And I can't hear them either. So it makes communication really difficult because I express myself with my face. And like you say, when you've got half of your face missing and you're trying to communicate with a person, it's really hard. You know, you just mentioned that and I thought I had the problem. So it's not just me. <laughs> no, <it's not>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we spoke about eyelashes. So you, the first time you wore eyelashes when you were 40 something, how did that feel? And, and what made you do it? Well, I I mean, I, I got married at 42 and I didn't wear false eyelashes. You know, I, I didn't, it just wasn't a thing that we did. So I think it was really a question of um, getting on the catwalk and, and, you know, and the stage um, and makeup artists and things like that. And they actually put eyelashes on you and then you, you wear the eyelashes and then you think, oh, I feel lost without them now. Um, and again, I understand all the young girls that literally just have them replaced. They do this like three or four week cycle of just having their eyelashes replaced again. Um, but mine's really just for the stage. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, you know, my my background wasn't like that. My mum never wore makeup. Um, she's in her 90s. Um, she was a real mummy type. Um, and so it came much later in life more so after I healed because there was no way that I was wearing makeup when I had this uh, skin condition I, I simply couldn't um, so I think I think I'm making up for lost time now <laughs> wonderful because if I can recall um, when I saw you in Morocco that was the first thing that I noticed these long eyelashes they look absolutely stunning. <laughs> yeah it's it's just part of the stage thing for me and it's it's that you know it's that thing about I think every woman wants to feel like a princess, even if it's just for a short while. She wants to be the queen of the day and she wants to feel beautiful. And, I, I, you know, that whole thing about not being able to be like that and people turning away from me because I was in bandages all the time. I even had a mask. I mean, it was just horrendous. Uh, and now being able to actually do that. But it doesn't mean that I'm not still a human being or a real person. It just means that I have a persona and that persona includes wearing eyelashes, you know, when when I'm Deborah J. Kelly um, on the stage. It doesn't mean I'm not the same as everybody else with fluffy slip and, <laughs> and fluffy pajamas and my hair tied back, you know, when I'm at home, because it is. But I just think that the stage kind of, you know, dictates uh, that one can actually dress up and I I'm able to wear the most amazing ball gowns. And I do feel like a princess now at 50 um so it's like reliving um those lost years <laughs> talking about a princess at 50 over 50 um you entered a pageant and won a pageant and you were 54 i know <laughs> and again you know i always think about these things and and today i was thinking about this film mr congeniality it was with sandra bullock and she was a police officer and you know she her view of uh, pageant girls was was sort of down there you know that they were silly and oh I want to do charity and all of this there was no substance to them and the film actually showed her going in as a pageant uh, queen uh, sorry as a pageant contestant uh, and it changed her whole perspective um, of life and everybody that was within that pageant and I think again when I got divorced um, my self-confidence was at its low and I don't know, I just spoke to someone, they said, oh, you know, we really want to create this, um, this you know, the Ms. Classic, and we'd love you to be part of it. Um, and I said, well, don't be silly. You know, it's ridiculous. So I'm too old. No, we're creating this particular, and so forth. And I went in and I won it. And then at 54, you're right, I'm, I'm current uh, reigning queen for uh, Ms. Wow, uh, Miss Classic Wow, sorry. Um, and... Yeah, yeah, and I like it, do you know that? Because again, it gets you the chance to dress up and to, you know, walk about like you own the stage um, and, and you know, to get that sash and so forth. But it's, it's not just that, it's the whole thing about saying, look, women in their 50s should not be forgotten. They should be embraced. They should still feel beautiful and my goodness you tell me so many things and I have to go off in it because I'm so passionate about this that women when they hit their 50s 
you know, they've been married for a long time, perhaps the children, they've spent the whole time nursing children, their, their children have left home, you know, they're on their own again now, uh, they've not had any chance to know who they were because they've dedicated all of their life to bringing up children, looking after their husband, being a housewife, being a career woman, and all of a sudden, you know, they look and they think, well, who am I? And, and I think, you know, for 50s women, it's really important. I really want to change the way that people view women, you know, on the catwalk, women in modelling that are 50, 60, 70 plus. You know, why should it stop just because we, you know, we hit 50? I so agree with you. You know, I was uh, 55 when I entered the pageant, uh, the Mrs. Johannesburg, well, 54, going on to 55, when I entered the Mrs. Johannesburg pageant and I won it. Um, so yes, embrace your age, embrace who you are, and it's for the organizers to give other women an opportunity as well. And this is um, what I loved about the Role Models Foundation, because they give people like me, a single person, uh, over the age of 50, um an opportunity you are not over the age of 50 i'm sorry i'm trying not to interrupt you but i you're not are you i just turned 57 the other day oh my God. <laughs> well then then that's that's gonna be a real inspiration for me as well do you know that because you look i i thought even when i interviewed i thought you were in your early 40s Wow, Deborah, you're going to be my life, my friend forever. Oh, God. My lifelong friend. Oh, well, definitely now. <laughs> That's it, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, we actually in the same boat. We're sailing in the same yes. boat over 50s. <laughs> yes. I have no idea. There you are, you see. Don't judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, Deborah, I'm just going to go through some of your awards. I think this is inspiration just on its own. So you've won the BEFTA Award for Contribution to the World in 2019, Women's Empowerment Award winner 2019, Panache Global Entertainment Awards Outstanding Award in Media and Entertainment 2018, Best Female Presenter 2017 at the Oracle Awards in 2017, Best Female TV Personality 2017 at International Achievers Awards, Best Charity Supporter Award at Miss London Borough Pageants 2015, and the list goes on. Okay, I'm not going to go on and on and on. <laughs> it's all on the website. <laughs> How did this feel? I, um, I'm always amazed that that people embrace me for what I've done. It's, but I'm I'm always humble. Um, I, I the BEFTA award for me was just awesome because being recognized in the black entertainment you know for the afro-caribbean awards um for for the work that i'd done in that industry um they didn't have to do it nobody has to do it so it was you know it was such a such a beautiful thing to be acknowledged um for the work that i do in so many places and um long may it continue i hope that um i can still be sitting here with you and when we're in our 70s or 80s, perhaps, and have all of our trophies, like, all laid out in front of us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just such a lovely thing to be recognised for the work that you do, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. And you also uh, presented the uh, Loni Awards as well in Morocco. Yeah, I did. And, uh, you know, again, um, Ladies of All Nations International, um, it's, I've presented quite a few of their shows and, um, you know, I really appreciate what they're doing. And I think it's really important to bring women together, you know, women that have a voice, um, women that are culturally diverse um, and being able to embrace each other. And it's so inspiring to learn about different people's cultures as well. And, we can't do it at the moment because of COVID, but, you know, visiting um, all the different countries and embracing um, those women in the different countries as well. It's one of the things I miss at the moment, to be honest. Yes, I yes. get together very soon. You know, um, Dr. Makaka was going to have an event in London this year, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. 
So, you know, I was hoping to yeah. come on that event, but hopefully it's going to, something's going to happen soon and COVID is going to be something of the past where we can all get together as well. And yeah. Yeah. I hope so, because it's really, really affected the industry. Yes. Yes, it has. So Model Diaries UK, what's that oh. all about? So, excuse me, this is one of my babies in the making. I thought about it a couple of years ago and but I think what happened was, um, I think COVID really kind of brought it into the forefront for me because I haven't been able to be on the stage since last March and it's soul destroying. You know, I've had my issues as have everybody else. I've struggled, you know, I haven't worked properly. And I think it's important to appreciate that everybody has had like such a difficult time um, during this pandemic, but I wanted to do something positive. And I've got a lot of photographers, I mean, maybe 20, 30 that I, I meet all the time on a regular basis, like on the circuit, you know, for the red carpet and the fashion presenting. And I don't know, I just sat down and I thought, everybody always sort of credits models and they always credit, you know, the events and things like that, but the photographers get left out. And so I just, I decided I wanted to embrace a photography book which would actually bring the photographers into the forefront with their work. Um, but not only that, but it would personalize because this is me, everything has to be personal. It would personalize those people by way of um, interviews, like red carpet interviews in the book, uh, bios, um, I've got diaries in there, uh, real life, you know, real life that we've been going through since COVID. And it's all sort of tied up into this really beautiful photographic diary with all sorts of models of every shape and size every color and creed you know it really I mean I've got uh, actors actresses ambassadors I've got a bodyguard that does some modeling so they're not all classic you know stick thin uh, models and so this is series one um, which was launched last week it's actually number two um, in the bestsellers I'm so excited I can't I, I just like my dream at the moment because of what's going on and just making so many lives, giving them something, you know, to actually like to be able to publicize and something still at the moment because the fashion industry is shot. You know, we can't, we can't do anything. And the, the shoots, which I did for the book were all COVID safe. We had a marquee out the back, had a police officer, making sure we were COVID like safe according to regulations. We all had masks, we had like temperature checks. I mean, there were contracts. It, it wasn't an easy deal. Um, and when they had, you know, some of the models were saying, and some of the, some of the people that were part of it were saying, look, you know, you've made our day. You've actually brought us out of the house and allowed us, even though it's difficult, you've actually allowed us to be who we always were who we've not been able to be you know because of covid um so yeah so Wonderful. I'm, I'm so is yeah. that now on amazon yeah it's it's on amazon so if you go on to you can it will in fact it's international so you can go on amazon.com or amazon.co.uk uh, and just um look for deborah deborah the old spelling uh j kelly um and then i have a website um, called uh, www.themodeldiaries.co.uk um, where you can order it. Uh, and then I have another website, um, Deborah J. Kelly, um, where I'm trying to link everything at the moment. And of course, it's on all the social media and so forth. Um, Profit-wise, it's little because anybody that publishes on Amazon knows that they take a huge, huge bulk. Yes, of absolutely. If I'm supposed to say that because I... I Anyway, um, it wasn't about that. It was about leaving a legacy. It was yes. about making a change. Um, and I'm really proud of the book. It's so, it's so beautiful. It's done by way of a scrapbook and like a storybook. So there's all different snippets and, and of information. Yeah. It's all COVID related and diversity. So I'm really proud of it. You know, I've just been uh, buying books, um, the Kindle version now, because it's so difficult to get um, delivery here in South Africa. Um, the book that I was, that I co-authored um, in the US, yes. um, it was sent through in December, but I didn't get it as yet. 
So because of that, I've just been buying all my books, uh, you know, on the Kindle version that I can read on my iPad. Um, so I will get you a book at some point. Um, I'm putting it out on Kindle, my lovely. It's um, yeah. I've got a publisher. He's called Dean Publishing, and he actually is a publisher for diversity. Um, you know, most of his like publishers are Afro Caribbean, so I was really humbled that he took me. But you know, this is this is where I wanted to be in the market. But anyway, so he he and I will be publishing a Kindle version shortly, so that everybody can get a copy. Um, Yay! I'm so excited because Aww. I will definitely get it. Uh, and I, I actually like the Kindle versions on my iPad because I think it's it's so useful, especially if you're going somewhere and you have your iPad with you and you can just read, you know, wherever you are, um, opposed to carrying a book around. So it's very uh, true. So I prefer the Kindle versions for now. I'm so addicted to that. Uh, Deborah, <laughs> we're running out of time, but um, just very quickly, where to from here? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, COVID dependent, isn't it? Uh, you know, I'd like to be back on the stage and, and that's that's where I feel I belong. But hey ho, um, we will move forward with uh, Model Diaries UK uh, Series 2. Um, at the moment, we can't do anything because lockdown is, is complete. You know, you're not even allowed to meet anybody, I don't think, outside. Um, but as soon as restrictions lift and as they lift, um, I'm going to try to um, get the next book and I want you to come and be part of it um, most definitely because you're an inspirational woman and I'd love you to be part of it. If you're in the UK, let me know um, and, and you can come over somehow and we'll have to plan it, you know, carefully. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Deborah, thank you so much for chatting. I had so much of fun just chatting to you and connecting after so long. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Definitely, we will be seeing each other. Just stay safe and stay blessed. Oh, you too. It was so lovely to reunite with you. And when you come to the UK, you must, you must let me know. We'll find a way, even if it means walking in a park, um, just the two of us. Absolutely. We're going to do that. The over 50s, remember? We have to do that. <laughs> we do. We do. We have to. Us women, us 50 year old plus, we need to stick together. <laughs> yes. All the best and we'll chat soon. Oh, thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.